My name is Mike, and this is the Hot Seat. Good morning out there to my viewers. This, folks, it's going to be a long one. I'm going to try to summarize as quickly as possible this. This is why I've been saying we can no longer vote Republican or Democrat again. And the only exception is Ron and Rand Paul, which they're really libertarians. They're not Republicans and they're not Democrats. And folks, this piece is another illustration of why we are in war after war after war and why this government in connection with the Federal Reserve is bankrupting the people of this country and even Europe, Asia, everywhere where their tentacles are reaching out to. I titled this piece The Four Horsemen of the Federal Reserve. I will leave the full link in the description field. I really think it's mandatory reading. You've got to know who the players are and why we're going down the path we're going and why our only recourse is to vote third party and get these vipers out of office. The Four Horsemen of Banking, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo own the Four Horsemen of Oil, ExxonMobil, Royal Dutch Shell, British Petroleum, and Chevron Texaco. In tandem with Deutsche Bank, BNP, Barclays, and other European old money giants. According to company 10K filings to the SEC, the Four Horsemen of Banking are among the top 10 stockholders of virtually every Fortune 500 corporation. One important repository for the wealth of the global oligarchy that owns these bank holding companies is U.S. Trust Corporation, founded in 1853 and now owned by Bank of America. A recent U.S. Trust corporate director and honorary trustee was Walter Rothschild. Other directors included Daniel Davidson of J.P. Morgan Chase, Richard Tucker of ExxonMobil, Daniel Roberts of Citigroup, and Marshall Schwartz of Morgan Stanley. 80% ownership of the New York Federal Reserve Bank, by far the most powerful Fed branch by just eight families, four of which reside in the United States. There are the Goldman Sachs, Rockefellers, Lehman's, and Kuhn Liebs of New York, the Rothschilds of Paris and London, the Warburgs of Hamburg, the Lazards of Paris, and the Israel Moses safes of Rome. House of Morgan. Federal Reserve Bank was born in 1913, the same year the U.S. banking scion J.P. Morgan died and the Rockefeller Foundation was formed. The House of Morgan presided over American finance from the corner of Wall Street and Broad, acting as quasi-U.S. central banks since 1838, when George Peabody founded it in London. The House of Morgan fell under the Rothschild and Rockefeller family control, and New York Herald headline wrote, Railroad Kings Formed Gigantic Trust. J.P. Pont Morgan, who once, started, who once stated, the competition was a sin. Think of it. All competing railroad traffic west of St. Louis placed in the control of about 30 men. Folks, I'm going to skip a little bit. The House of Morgan was very much in league with the British House of Windsor and the Italian House of Savoy. The Kuhn Liebs, Warburgs, Lehmans, Lazards, Israel Moses Safes, and Goldman Sachs also had close ties to European royalty. By 1895, Morgan controlled the flow of gold in and out of the United States. Page 2. The House of Morgan, Morgan financed half the U.S. war effort in World War I while receiving commissions for lining up contractors like GE, DuPont, U.S. Steel, Kennecott, 
and the Sarko. All were Morgan clients. Morgan also financed the British Boer War in South Africa and the Franco-Prussian War. 1919 Peace Par Paris Peace Conference was presided over by Morgan, which led both German and Allied reconstruction efforts. In the 30s, populism resurfaced in America after Goldman Sachs, Lehman Bank, and others profited from the crash of 1929. House Bank Committee Chairman Lewis McFadden said of the Great Depression, it was no accident. It was a carefully contrived occurrence. The international bankers sought to bring about a condition of despair here in the United States so they might emerge as rulers of us all. Senator Gerald Nye, Democrat from North Dakota, chaired a munitions investigation in 1936. Nye concluded that the House of Morgan had plunged the U.S. into World War I to protect loans and create a booming arms industry, much like we're seeing today. Nye later produced a document titled The Next War, which he cynically referred to the old goddess of democracy trick, through which Japan could be used to lure the United States into World War II. The House of Rockefeller. Bank of International Settlements, BIS, in Basel, Switzerland, is the most powerful bank in the world, a global central bank for the eight families who control the private central banks of almost all Western and developing nations. The first president of BIS was Rockefeller Bank, banker Gates McGarrett, an official at Chase Manhattan, and the Federal Reserve. BIS is owned by the Federal Reserve Bank, Bank of England, Bank of Italy, Bank of Canada, Swiss National Bank, Niederlands Bank, Bundesbank, and Bank of France. Historian Carol Quigley wrote in his epic book, Tragedy and Hope, that BIS was part of a plan to create a world system of financial control in private hands, able to dominate the political system of each country and the economy of the world as a whole, to be controlled in a feudalistic fashion by the central banks of the world acting in concert by secret agreements. So folks, this one world order has been on the plan, on the table for at least 150 years. It is no coincidence that BIS is headquartered in Switzerland, favorite hiding place for the wealth of the global aristocracy and headquarters for the P2 Italian Freemasons Alpha Lodge. Alpena Lodge, excuse me, and Nazi International. Other institutions which the eight families control include the World Economic Forum, the International Monetary Conference, and the World Trade Organization. Morgan and the Rockefellers provided the financial backing for Merrill Lynch, boosting it into the big five of U.S. investment banking. Merrill Lynch is now part of Bank of America. One Rockefeller Standard Oil partner was Eddie Harkness, whose family came to control Chemical Bank. Another was James Stillman, whose family controlled Manufacturers Hanover Trust. Both banks have merged under the J.P. Morgan Chase umbrella. In the insurance business, the Rockefellers control MetLife, Equitable Life, Prudential, and New York Life. Rockefeller banks control 25% of all assets of the 50 largest U.S. commercial banks and 30% of all assets of the 50 largest insurance companies. Insurance companies, the first in the U.S., was launched by Freemasons through the Woodmans of America. They play a key role in the Bermuda drug money shuffle. David Rockefeller was instrumental in the construction of the World Trade Center towers. The Dulles and Rockefeller families are cousins. Alan Dulles created the CIA, assisted the Nazis, covered up the Kennedy hit from his Warren Commission perch, and uh, remember how Arlen Specter is in the news this week, sold out Ricky Santorum, who said Specter was a champion of justice and liberty. Right. The Rockefeller 
Rockefellers were instrumental in forming the depopulation-oriented Club of Rome at the family estate in Bellagio, Italy. The Pocantico Hills estate gave birth to the Trilateral Commission. The family is a major funding of the eugenics movement, which spawned Hitler, human cloning, and the current DNA obsession in U.S. scientific circles. Folks, in October of 1975, in an interview with Playboy magazine, Vice President Nelson Rockefeller, who was also governor of New York, articulated his family's patronizing worldview. I am a great believer in planning, economic, social, political, military, and total world planning. Quote, unquote. Alexander Hamilton, the first secretary of the treasury, was a Freemason. And by the way, folks, I did a show on libertarian versus conservatism. If you're for the Constitution, if you're for civil liberties, civil liberties rather, you are a libertarian. Hamilton was a conservative. Check out that show and see what real conservatism is all about. At any rate, Hamilton believed in total control by the Commonwealth and an imperialistic America, much like we see today. He had close t ties with the Rothschild family. He had close relations with the Rothschild family, which owns the Bank of England and leads the European Freemason movement. With Rothschild financing Alexander, Alexander Hamilton, he founded two New York banks, including Bank of New York. George Washington, Ben Franklin, John Jay, Ethan Allen, Samuel Allen, Patrick Henry, John Brown, Roger Sherman, Samuel Adams, they were all Masons. George Washington himself was Grand Master of the Virginia Lodge. Of the general officers in the Revolutionary Army, 33 were Masons. Now listen to this, folks. This was highly symbolic since 33 degree Masons become illuminated. Get that, folks? Illuminated. Populist founding fathers led by John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and Thomas Paine, none of them were Masons. They were libertarians, and that's why they clashed with Hamilton and his crew. They wanted to completely sever ties with the British crown, but were overruled by the Masonic faction led by Washington, Hamilton, and Grand Master of the St. Andrews Lodge in Boston, General Joseph Warren, who wanted to defy Parliament but remain loyal to the Crown. Hamilton was only the first in a series of eight families cronies to hold the key position of Treasury Secretary. In recent times, Kennedy Treasury Secretary Douglas Dillon came from Dillon Reed, now part of UBS Warburg. Nixon Treasury Secretaries David Kennedy and William Simon came from Continental Illinois Bank, now part of Bank of America, and Salmon Brothers, now part of Citigroup, respectively. Get it, folks? You get the connections here? Thomas Jefferson argued that the United States needed a publicly owned central bank so that European monarchs and aristocrats could not use the printing of money to control the affairs of the new nation. Jefferson stated, a country which expects to remain ignorant and free expects that which has never been and that which will never be. So for all of you folks that want to stay with your head in the sand, you are part of the problem, not the solution. The Rothschild sponsored Hamilton's arguments for a private central bank carried the day. In 1791, the Bank of the United States was formed with the Rothschilds as the main owners. In 1828, Andrew Jackson took a run at the U.S. presidency. Throughout his campaign, he railed against international bankers who controlled the B.U.S. Jackson ranted, you are a den of vipers. I listened. I intended to expose you, and by the eternal God, I will rout you out. If the people understood the rank injustices of our money and banking system, there would be a revolution by morning. You people better start paying heed. In 1835, he was the target of an assassination attempt. 
The gunman was Richard Lawrence, who confessed that he was in touch with the powers of Europe. By 1861, the U.S. was $100 million in debt. New President Abraham Lincoln snubbed the Euro bankers again, including Lincoln Green issuing Lincoln greenbacks to pay Union Army bills. And how did that work out for Lincoln? In 1865, he was assassinated, and John Wilkes Booth had ties to European bankers. President John F. Kennedy found himself in the eight families' crosshairs. Kennedy had announced a crackdown on offshore tax havens and proposed increases in tax rates on large oil and mining companies. He supported eliminating tax loopholes, which benefit the super-rich. Kennedy was killed in 1963. The House of Roth Rothschild, the Orange Order Brotherhood, which recently fomented Northern Ireland Protestant violence, put William III on the English throne, where he ruled both Holland and Britain. In 1694, William III teamed up with the UK aristocracy to launch the Private Bank of England. The Rothschild and their inbred eight, family par eight families' partners gradually came to control the Bank of England. Bank of England Deputy Governor George Blunden put it, Fear is what make makes the bank's power so acceptable. The bank is is able to exert its influence when people are dependent on us and fear losing their privileges or when they are frightened. Mayor Amshar Rothschild once said, I care not who controls a nation's political affairs so long as I control her currency. A few generations earlier, well, the House of Rothschild financed the Prussian War, the Crimean War, and the British attempt to seize the Suez Canal from the French. Meyer Amshar Rothschild bragged of his, of his investment strategy. When the streets of Paris are running with blood, I buy. The Warburgs, Kuhn Liebs, Goldman Sachs, Schiff, and Rothschild have intermarried into one big happy banking family cartel. The Club of Isles provides capital for George Soros's Quantum Fund NV which made substantial financial gains in 1998 and 99, following the collapse of currencies of Thailand, Indonesia, and Russia. Soros was a major shareholder at George W. Bush's Harkin Energy. The Club of Isles is led by the Rothschilds and includes Queen Elizabeth II and other wealthy European aristocrats and nobility. George Soros is a major Obama backer and predictor of world financial collapse. After all, he controls it. He can predict it. Folks, I know this was long. I know this was lengthy. For those of you that may watch this in its entirety, please tell your friends. Please get on Twitter and YouTube. you got to speak out about this. This is why, folks, our U.S. troops are pawns in this bloody game of world domination. Our only recourse is to vote third party. If we don't, we guarantee blood in our neighborhoods because we will be stripped of everything. And when you lose everything, you turn to violence. My name is Mike, and this is The Hot Seat.